Hi there, Don Simon here with my wife, Goldie Goldilocks. <laughs> um, it's Saturday, July 30th, 2021. The heat and humidity has finally abated to where we can work a bit outside. And so we're going to continue on with our fence project and share that with uh, Annie's Facebook friends. Yep, and uh, as you can see, we will uh, show you um, all the tools that we use and how we set these up. Sounds a plan. Let's get going. Okay. Okay, just a uh, quick explanation of the fence design. It's the same design that uh, my wife Goldilocks and I put up 20 years ago. So in a sense, this is a continuation of that project. Um, the design we came up with is the, uh, the fence posts are 4x4 pressure treated lumber. Um, that way they should last a good long time. Um, the 2x4 pressure treated rail top and bottom the posts are on seven foot six inch centers. Uh, here in the United States most building materials come in some sort of increment of eight feet so putting them at seven foot six gives me a little bit of margin room in case the post is not exactly uh, at the uh, spacing for it. The pickets are one by fours. Um, usually we get the uh, one by fours in eight foot length so I'll get two pickets out of them and we'll Put them at an even spacing, we'll notch the tops and make sure that they're plumb, which is straight up and down, and then attach them. Now, 20 years ago when we built the other section of fence, we attached them with nails, which was quite a, an effort because Goldilocks would have to stand behind the rail with another 2x4 while I pounded the nails in. This time we'll be using deck screws, much easier, don't have to do any of that backing on the rail, it just screws right in, it's much easier. So with that, let's go to the tools that we use. Okay, tools, part one. These are the tools we use at the fence itself. Number one is a marking gauge. This uh, is, gauge here is set so that I get the proper spacing between the pickets. And then, since we notch the pickets on the top and we want them all the same distance from the uh, top of the top rail, this is set to that height with one notch. Um, since the pickets are never exactly the same width, um, I just use one side of it and we flip it over to, to mark the other and side. And that was handmade? Well, yeah, pretty much. We pretty had to simple, make just it. Just a couple blocks of wood, make sure that they're the correct shape and size. Um, level, make sure I get them plumb. Um, hammer to tap them one way or the other. Once I get it where they need to be, I've got clamps so I can clamp them while attaching them with the deck screws. And one of the greatest inventions of all is a cordless drill. This is a 20 volt by Craftsman. This thing has been a workhorse. And it comes with a special driver bit it's called a T25 driver that uh, drives the deck screws in. This thing has just been Fantastic. Well worth the money. It's made it much easier to accomplish this job. Yeah, I think there's a lot of um, of those tools that are becoming very, very useful these days. Very useful. Now, can you explain um, the piece of wood underneath, um, you know, the pickets? Yes, this 2x4 is just attached at the very bottom here. This is to make sure that the pickets, that the bottom part of the pickets all follow an even path so that you don't have this jagged, um, appearance at the bottom of it. So, and then this makes sure that there's a little bit of clearance between the bottom of the picket and the ground, and that way, should we ever get grass to grow here, I can weed whack under the pickets, and the bottom of the wood is not in the dirt where it can, uh, is liable to rot, yeah. etc. Okay, on to the table next. Okay, part two coming up. Okay, some of the other tools, part two. Very basic hand tools here. In fact, the drill driver is probably the only power tool that gets used in this. Uh, number one is just a, a marking triangle so I can get 45 degree angles and right angles and mark those on the pickets for the cut lines. Oops. Obviously a number two pencil to help do that. For cutting the main cut on the uh, one by fours, I use, uh, this is just a hand saw. This is the one we bought over 20 years ago to do the original fence project. And believe it or not, it is still sharp. Mm -hmm. Gets used a lot, but it cuts wonderfully for this project. Well, if you take care of your tools, they keep going and going. That's true. 
to cut the notches on the top I use a dovetail saw. This is a 14 teeth per inch or tooth per inch saw. Um, really quick to help get the uh, saw curve started. Stanley utility knife. When I'm sawing them you'll see that I'll use uh, clamps here to hold it onto the workmate. Now this portable workbench here um, we bought in 1989. So we moved into Melville. Yes. Just after Annie and I were married, yeah. the, uh, the Navy housing that we moved into had a small little closet area under underneath the stairs. the stairs where I was banished to do my woodworking at. Now the nice thing about that was there was like a linoleum floor in the place. So all the wood chips and sawdust and everything were very easy to clean up. This is about the third or fourth top I've put on this thing, which shows you how much it's gotten used. And these are ridiculously expensive now. You go to the home improvement store to buy one of these, and it's a couple, you know, it's well over a hundred bucks. I think I got this one for like thirty dollars when when I first got it. And plus, the new tops again have made out. You've made them yourself. You yeah, mean usually yourself. these things come with something that's out of press board, which crumbles and, and fades away. This one I made out of some, I think it was poplar wood, two two layers that I glued together and drilled the holes in it. So it's I've got it at the level of quality that I want when I use it. So also, uh, we have a plane there just to... Oh, yes, I didn't mention this. Yeah. This is a block plane. Now, I, this one... I bought when I bought my first house in Virginia Beach in 1985. So I've had this longer than I've had. Is that a Stanley? Ones. No, this is a Sears Craftsman. This was an El Cheapo one. You probably, I can't even remember what I paid for it at the time. It was probably on the order of $10. It was very inexpensive, but also quite crudely made. And for years and years and years, I really didn't use it much. One, because I didn't know how to properly set it how to properly sharpen it, and as I've learned over the years of how to sharpen the blades, how to set the blades, how to, you know, take care of the, the sole of the plane, its its utility has, has really been really, really good. So I use this after I cut the tops of the pickets to just trim them, get any jagged edges off them, make them a little bit smoother. So let me finish off. Uh, we also have a an old manual uh, pencil sharpener there, which I remember then when I was a little girl at school. We also have the screws that he's holding, and they we, we get them in white, so you don't have to what you know uh, paint them. Mm -hmm. He's dipping them in um, turtle wax. Well, yeah, this is regular automotive. Automotive, to, and I prefer that towards compared to the liquid. It's just easier. Yep. So I kind of lubricate them so that they yeah. go in much easier. And there's two, there's four to a picket, two top, two bottom. Um, lastly, we have a bucket, if you could pick that up, which is for all the bits of wood that come off that I can throw on the burn pile. Yeah. And before we get cracking, we forgot to get the uh, plane uh, for any bits on the back. Oh, the chisel. The chisel, rather. Yeah, yeah the chisel. A... 2 inch or 50 millimeter chisel just wide enough to in case there's any yeah in case some of the pain is pain has gone off. underneath and before we get cracking I'm gonna because I'm the, the paint person here uh, I painted one side of all the pickets the reason why I've done that is it's yeah. much easier pan over and see them oh yes here we go it's easier uh, doing it that way when they're attached um, from the inside of the rails it gets a bit messy the outside is not painted, but that will be very easy to do with um, a paint, paint sprayer. So on that note, we're going to shut off and uh, you get the chisel and we'll get cracking. Right, right. Let's get going. Yeah. All right. Okay, so first off, step one is mark the spacing. So I usually mark it on the top rail. Step two, bring over a fresh one by four by eight painted side toward the inside of the fence. We'll stick it up right next to the marking. And I'll use the ah, level. I might have to do the camera, just a second. All 
All right. So just keep tapping until you get it plumb. You might get my stomach. <laughs> Almost there. I mark the rails, and he marks the top, and the Goldilocks, yeah, Goldilocks <laughs> marks the top and the notches to be cut. I am a big bear lover. I'm talking about brown bears. Okay. Okay, good? Yep, that's good. All right, if you could take that over while I do the limbo lower now. And I gotta move Nothing the really complicated. I'm just gonna make sure it's marked on the edges so I have guidelines when I cut this little triangle here, which is super inexpensive but incredibly helpful. Allows me to Continue the uh, 45 degree angles and the 90 degree angles around. So once they're all marked, now I have my cut lines. Next step, cut some notches for starting. And I'm I will ask Goldilocks to come over here. Yeah, you won't see me in this, but I have to hold the end so, yeah, so the end of the board doesn't flop over. Yeah. Good old sharp tooth saw here works great. across the camera to put this back. Quite all right. Dovetail saw. Doesn't take much pressure or effort. Just let the saw do the work. And we have the bucket under there to catch the bits that drop off. Like I said earlier, for the uh, burn pile, which we're hoping we get some rain here soon, so we can get rid of some um, brush. But we're not burning until. Yeah, it's not safe. It's to just burn. not safe. We're kind of in a drought over, here. And this is where I use the block plane yep. to trim any. And I don't see any drippy drippy, so you don't need the chisel. edges and it's good to go. All and right. That's all there is to it in cutting one of these pickets. So next it's put it back up in position and yep. screw it into and place. And I will go. And I usually do one top left. That easy. Boom. Number two. Number two on the bottom rail, top left. Roll on the fall. There we are. There we are. That's picket number one. Lather, rinse, repeat. And uh, we're going to stop on this one uh, for this video. And we have nine, nine, yeah, nine more to go. Yep. yep.